Okay, Shirley, you want to start? Okay. Um, I'm just going to show real quick one little plant, uh, how to make it. Uh, I don't even know what it's called. It's just a plant. So I'm going to move my camera. So pin, pin Shirley, or you could show, oh, I could showcase. I have to get a new camera, so I don't know how this thing's going to work. <laughs> Spot, please. Spotlight. So, oh, where, where'd I go? Uh, well, you're seeing your workbench. Okay. There you go. All right. Oh, we need a safety pin. I never can find a safety pin when I need one. Okay. Um, this is the plant. Cute. Uh, oops. Uh, Marcia, can you spotlight her, please? She is spotlighted on mine, and I don't know. I already I spotlighted know. her. Okay. Okay. Spotlighted. Well, maybe it's what I've got selected. I'll change. Okay, no, this is just a, a nothing little plant. Um, I made it real simple with a snowflake punch. And I like to use tracing paper. And I paint all my tracing paper, uh, usually on one side. And you can see my two pieces here. This one looks darker. Um, this one here, that's the top of the leaf. This is the bottom of the leaf that wasn't painted. And you can see it's just a simple snowflake. So you want them uh, with the painted side down. And I got this really neat set of um, styluses. There's also a couple other large ones. Um, I'm learning how to do dot painting. And I got this whole kit with a whole bunch of other stuff with it. But you can see there's these different sizes here. And then you turn them around and the blue ones have those rubber paint brushes and then a larger one. And there's, uh, I think, two more large ball uh, styluses. So you just find the one that's going to fit the size of your leaf. And I just kind of press down a little bit so that it curls each leaf. And you can see it curled up there. Kind of looks like a little octopus. So we do that to all, all the leaves. And I come through with my safety pin. Oh, by the way, I like to use fleece over a piece of that fun foam. Because the fun foam, especially with smaller uh, petals, they stick to it and you have to dig them out. And with the fun foam, it just releases it, as you could see when I was pressing this. And just poke your... Safety pin through the leaves. The reason I like using this tracing paper, it has a nice translucent look about it, especially with your flowers. Um, I know different people use different things, but this is my, my uh, paper of choice. And just press it down like that through the if I have thicker fleece, the uh, pin goes through better. You can just use uh, this fleece too, double or triple it. So then I'm going to take some white paint. And you don't need too much. Just take a piece of that thin paper covered wire and just Dip it in your paint. And for this one, I use embossing powder. It's really neat because it, it doesn't uh, glob up a whole lot. So I take my embossing powder and just dip it in. The paint is wet. So you got a nice little something there for whatever this plant is. And embossing powder comes in many different colors. And then I'm not gonna, whoops, I better put my lid on my paint before I spill it. 
that's the last thing I need is paint all over, don't I? <laughs> so you're just going to take this and put it through your first set of leaves, through that hole. And I can't find the hole. Oh, where'd it go? Well, it's not cooperating with me. I hope I don't have butter fingers like this on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> it will make the rest of us feel better. <laughs> right. So you're just going to put this one up as far as you want it and then take a toothpick and just um, take some glue and put a little dot of glue down here so it secures it where you want that and then put on leaf number two, leaf number three and for time I'm not going to do all that and then after it's dry you can take and your tweezers and arch the tips of your leaves down a little bit more. Or always wait until after it's dried. And then you can do a little more shaping. And see how that one just curled a up a little, little bit plant. tighter? Yeah. And when I'm working on plants, I took some of those little mini um, red spools and I put them on a paint stick, just glued them on. So it makes a really nice plant holder. And there's the plant. Uh, basically, two plants is just one, one thing for any scale. Shape your leaves and glue them on your stem. And I have a whole tray full of samples here to show you. Oh, wow. These are things that I've made over the years. I guess I'm going to have to take the camera off here. This is just a plastic plant, and I cut the tips off of it and stuck them in a flower pot. It's large, but if you've got a jumbo fern, it'll work. <coughs> uh, the, the pothos. I just cut the leaves off of a plant. You can see on the back where where the, the plastic stem comes up. And I just cut them to shape and just stuck them in a pot. This was another uh, plas uh, artificial plant. And I just cut the leaves to shape. I gotta get used to this new camera. <laughs> just cut them into uh, small, medium, and large and put a, glue a piece of wire on the back and just start sticking them in a pot, start going in a, a circular, circular pattern. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> there we are. These were two succulents. Uh, they came on a vine. And I just uh, powdered this one up and I accented it with paint. And then I accented the other one with a little bit of paint with a little bit of pink paint and stuck a, stuck a little flower in it. And the hanging plant here, that's a, a simple teardrop uh, punch. And you just keep gluing them on wires and putting them in there. Uh, the uh, spider plant, cut as narrow as you can and just keep sticking all them things together. Start with a, a few of them in the center and glue them at the bottom and then keep gluing around it and around it and around it and then add some wires. The nest fern here, that's just um, the regular paint paper to it. That's lightly painted with the tracing paper and you can see the difference where one is a lot lighter and one is a lot darker. And for leaves, the, the 
basic thing is glue your wire almost to the tip of each leaf. Uh, actually, this one I used actual, actual individual petals. And then took a little piece and cut real fine and made it into a circle around the toothpick and glued it on the, the six petals underneath it. And the, the one next to it, I used the star punch and did the same, uh, a small flower and edged it with a permanent marker. I have three different kinds of daisies here. Okay. Those are just simple daisy punches. This one in the basket down here, that's a piece of like an aquarium plastic plant that I just stuck in the edge for extra green. Uh, the others have actual leaves in them. Uh, this one, some of that green stuff that you get in the winter for uh, like pines, I stuck that in there, cut off little pieces of that for the greenery. There's two different um, geraniums here. This is the, the old, old one that I made using bunka. And it doesn't really look too bad. But then I learned how to do it with the little uh, flowers. Another outside plant is the hyacinth. That one is done with bunka. And there, that, that's a little better. And the other one is uh, the little tiny flowers all glued up and down the stem. And we have a Christmas cactus there. That's using those star flake things. And you cut off the arms of the star flake and you glue one star, one arm, uh, and then glue another one and you make different shapes, you know, like you make a long one or and then like a Y or whatever. And then at the ends, you take a little uh, flower and glue it on there. Okay. All right. Now my flower arrangement here, I did the same thing with that one. I, I cut out a heart punch and then cut a little, uh, those, the teeniest, tiniest little circle punch at the, uh, the notch in the heart and dip the wire in the embossing powder like I did on the plant that, we, that I just made. And then I made two dish gardens. The twig in that uh, back one, that's just a piece of brown cardstock you cut it very narrow and then you crunch it to make it look like a, a branch. And then just added some little uh, plants in there with them. And I made the planter out of quilling paper. I, have, I don't know if any of you have ever done quilling, but you just make this big circle and then you start to press it outwards so you get like a shallow bowl and then cover it with Mod Podge or something like that to seal it. So that made an actual little bowl. Uh, Shirley, excuse me, can you turn your sound up at all? Turn it what? Turn it up. You cut out, Marsha. Yes, yeah, she did. You are coming through rather softly. Um, we just wondered if you could turn your microphone up at all or speak louder. Okay, um, I don't think there's a volume control on this camera. <laughs> but that's all the plants that I have to show. So there's a whole whole dish full. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Are you back, Marsha? Yeah, well, I, I'm here. I don't know about the sound, but. <laughs> Thank you, we hear you now. <laughs> I, otherwise, otherwise, I was going to take over. <laughs> you, <Yeah>. you go. <laughs> okay, Pat Perry. Okay, I forgot I volunteered for this, so bear with me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I got some things to show you, uh, houses I've done, and I've landscaped them with flowers, etc. And then I just thought I'd show you how I make a. 
hollyhock leaf, just to show you. And you might have seen some of these before. Um, so I love to do flowers, and I love flowers on my um, my pieces. This was a um, this was a kit or a class I did with Suzanne Larson, Suzanne and Andy, and um, she included all of the flowers, the kit for the flowers in there. So the tree was made just by a wire that was painted brown and twisted, and then we put some of the vine on the top to make it look like a um, Help me out here, I've forgotten the name. Mysteria. Uh, Mysteria. Yeah. And then just some foam, uh, fun foam, basically some foam pieces on it uh, for that. And it's got, um, because we were doing ME, her hollyhocks or her uh, sunflowers had um, checkered middles, which I thought was really cute. <laughs> and um, she included all this stuff and she taught us how to do the, um, the window. I love window boxes and you'll see I think I have window boxes on everything I'm going to show you. And what she taught us the most was to make a center for the middle of your flower. She just got us to bring colored pencils and we took a blue pencil and we pushed it down into the foam or into the, the mouse pad um, with a blue pencil and turned it and that way it gave us centers to the um, to the flowers and the flower boxes. So I learned that from her which was and those big flowers. You know, Oh yeah, and the ones on the front, here, here, here. the yellow here. ones, the two bright yellow ones, There's and they are quite bright yellow. They are just pieces of, hold on, I have to, I'm left-handed, um, just this stuff. You buy it in Michael's. Oh yeah, it's plastic. Put it yeah. down, shape it, and then put some glue all over it and dip it into a uh, flower sock. And you end up with those, um, those. Oh, cute yellow ones there, really easy to do. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. oh, really. oh, yeah. And these ones were just wire, the mm -hmm. red ones were just wire, mm -hmm. glue and into flower soft, and then stuck into the ground with some leaves around them. So pretty easy to do. Yeah, maybe that'd be better. And so that was the station for, for all you quarter inch scalers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the quarter inch person. And then, I also took another, this was a house that I did, and it was um, a snikey house, Bruce and Judy's. It's called Miss Monarch. And I used instructions from one of Suzanne's kits. I think it was Mary, Mary Hart, the Mary Hart house. And she, we got them from her, and we just made oh, wow. on there. So I've got, um, these are just, actually, they're from Michael's. Those are, the, those are the sunflowers and I used yellow and yellow and orange paper and I'll show you the paper. The middle I made with a brown punch, just punched out a piece of paper, painted it brown and I put a little bit of dark brown ballast in it so it looked like seed to make it look like that. This is a bee balm that I struggled to make every flower. Never do that again. <laughs> um, hollyhocks that I, I made myself. This is the same kind of this thing again, this little dipped in a different color of fun oh, foam. Wow. And did all of that. So I made all of the flowers on this sucker myself with the exception of this purple vine. And the purple vine I found um, in, in Michael's, Michael's, believe it or not. Right. And I just cut out pieces and I had actually broken that one piece of um, railing. So I stuck it up there to hide it. <laughs> Work great. Can't even see it. So, and then the bushes are just basically, you know, pieces of, of um, foliage and did that. And there's on the other side. So the instructions for most of these flowers on this side are already on the MCC groups IO file because I sent them, I had sent them to uh, Marsha and she put them on. So they're all, uh, they're all under there if you want to have a look at them. Awesome. Okay. okay. So Sorry, the first, the first one that you showed, I made that house too, but I made it in different colors. Uh, th that's the color it came in. It was Miss Monarch and it came in mauve. No, the, the, the first one you showed. The... Oh, um, I have a green one as well, which was a different one. I have a, a different one uh, from Suzanne as well. But this is, I think this is the artist studio. Yeah. And the other one is a little house, like it's more of an Emmy house. Oh. <laughs> So, yeah. but I do have a different one in brown, very similar. Um, 
this is Miss Ivy, and this is another stanky house. And um, once again, I really love my flower boxes, as you can see. So I made flower boxes to go with the house. I changed the house by putting yellow. It was all supposed to be brown, all of the, all of the bread and stuff. And I put yellow on because I didn't like it. <laughs> and I made my big old flower boxes because I love flower boxes. And then the base, let's see if I can show you better. The base is basically um, a little bit of foliage and I just sprayed it the heck with it, scenic cement, and I put flower, flower soft on it. All different color flower soft mixed together because it, it, the way it looked, it needed sort of flowers, it's very soft flowers everywhere. So that's, that's all I did for that and then used a vine for the ivy up the sides. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, Stop if you me. hold up your uh, Suzanne class one, I'll show mine. Um, What's that? I'm sorry? If you hold up Suzanne's house, I'll hold up mine and they can see I did my own flowers. <laughs> okay. Where's yours? I can't find you. Oh, yours is very different. Yeah, totally different. I can't see you at all. Look. And I have that um, sunflower on the side like you do. Yeah. And this flower on the, the porch here, that's a punch. And that punch makes every one of those graduated sized leaves. Did Is yours the flower? Is yours the artist studio inside? Uh, I don't have anything inside. Yeah, it's it's likely it's likely a different class. Yeah, and she probably did flowers because I have another one of Suzanne's, yeah. which is green, which is basically the same house. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like yellow. I hate yellow, <laughs> and I didn't like the checkered porch. I think Suzanne used that house a lot. Yeah. Come on, it's on. This is the other one I have that is very very similar. Mm -hmm. as well uh -huh. but in this one we put a a little seat there a little garden seat mm -hmm. and the inside is actually a furnished little house oh so she seemed to have used this little house a lot for different projects yeah she she really liked that one yeah she really loves that house. Yes, me too fun. that's why i have at least two that's how it's fun. oh this is the this is dream found the stuff that the purple stuff up my this monarch it's there's three different four different colors in it and we found it just at michael's and we just cut it apart and we just cut it apart and then hold on i'll show you all the colors and just um you can place it where you want it's just sort of a, a growing vine and that just comes like my, from michael's in a a vine and you just cut off what you want it's plastic with looks like flowers on it so it works out really pretty is it with the flower um, department or uh, what yeah. department? Yes, it's with the flower department, yeah. It's stems. Okay. Stems, it'd be stems. Hopefully they, they would probably still have something similar to that. Yeah. Um, this is one that I did. It's another one of Suzanne's. I love her stuff. <laughs> um, and this we I did because it just seemed to scream for Halloween, the colors of it. It needed fall. So um, I basically put pumpkins and a um hay bale and stuff and pumpkins and whatever and did all my foliage and my window boxes very fall because it just seemed to go with the whole colors of the project oh pretty that is so pretty and i did a oh I just, that's cute <laughs> a, a dream actually did you make the trellis of this dream makes those trellises yeah. super well and i just kept using uh fall colors and if you've noticed i've dotted the middles of the flowers and i don't know how you can see that with like a dark brown in all the window boxes so they have like a um, almost a black eyed susan look to them with your pencils yeah just took a just basically took a pencil my colored pencil and just dotted them but that to me just said halloween and i needed to do it halloween for fall yeah fall halloween i like those you're and then talented. this one i'm sorry you're very talented oh i like to do flowers i i don't know why this one is the one we did for the Utah State Day. And um, I copied the colors from 
a house that's on Martha's Vineyard. Um, so it's it's bright orange and yellow and whatever. And, and these all of these were yellow shingles and I, I grayed them out to make them look like um, wood shingles, faded wood shingles and the same thing with the roof. And I wanted to copy it. And the picture I had of this house, the flower boxes were huge. All red flowers, huge. So that's exactly what I did. I did it all in bright things. And I just had petals that I punched out and um, put some foliage and some vining and just glued them on, dotted the middle so they had a bit of color and bent them and then put them on. So there's a lot, a lot of different, a um, lot, a lot of flowers. It took me forever to do the flower box, but I just thought it needed big flower boxes. These were once again from Michael's, these two, I bought these from Michael's, just in their Eastery thingy. Every so often I have a bunch. And then the sides I did um, hollyhocks and sunflowers. And I made all of those. And I like my flowers big. Some people like tiny flowers. I like big flowers. Um, my hollyhocks are somewhere in the vicinity of six feet. And I love them that way because I have seen them that big here. And sunflowers to me need to be huge. So that's, I, I, I believe in big flowers. So you can see them. I, I like them better than teeny tiny little flowers in a garden. So those are my flowers. So the instructions for all of those things are going to be on, on the website. And what I do, what I use for my paper, and you're going to think this is crazy. Um, I go down to Walmart and I find envelopes. <laughs> so I go down and I look in the dollar cards every time they have a new set of cards come in. And these are all envelopes. And that's what's made all my hollyhocks and my sunflowers and everything. So I, this is what I use is envelopes from Walmart. And this was a really cool one my son got, which I grabbed because it's yellow on one side and it's orange on the other. Oh. So when I make some of the, the, and I don't think you can see them very well, uh, I would use one flower of uh, this color and one flower of this color. And I'd sort of put them like this. So the orange was peeking out. But that was a, that's a great one. I love that thing. But all these are all, every one of these is, is an envelope from Walmart. That's what I use for my flowers. <laughs> we can't find colored paper here. So that's what we use. <laughs> so that's the kind of weird things to do. And then I punch most of my flowers out, my flower petals out. Uh, and we have a bunch of those stupid little punches that really are hard to use. So I found this on Dragonfly and it's, it's a punch, a puncher. So you do this. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. It. I love it. And it punches. These are fingers. Yeah. Ooh. It was on, on Dragonfly. What do you call that? That's called a Magnum Power Punch. And it's, it's made by the Punch Bunch who makes these guys. Uh -huh. Made by the same guys. And I happened to see it on Dragonfly one day and I thought that I want to order. It's really nice. It's thick. It's got, you know, if you were doing corners or something, if you were scrapbooking, you could use it. But it sure is easier than trying to punch these little suckers out. I don't know. Yeah. I don't have the strength in my hand to do a million of them. And this one, you just sit and go and it, <laughs> it cuts them for you. It's Absolutely wonderful. best. I think that's that. one of the best flies I've ever made. <laughs> showing that yeah it's a cool thing okay and then I just wanted to show you as well just so the flowers for my hollyhocks once again I believe in big hollyhocks and I like color in the middle of my hollyhocks I don't like hollyhocks that don't have shading to them um, so what I do is I take my hollyhock leaves and Linda Austin taught me this Barb um, I'll just get rid of the water before it's everywhere and I, I have this little Pringles cap and I've got a piece of what is supposed to be napkin. napkin but it is indestructible and I've had this for probably six years let me get my paper out of the way so I don't get it wet and I put my hollyhocks I punch out my my um, circles and I've got two different circle cut sizes I have a um, three eighths well actually three a quarter a three eight punch and um, a six an eighth punch and I put them on here and then I bought a set in Walmart one day of watercolor pencils. So these are soaking wet because they're sitting on, on water in here. And I take my pencil, a little bit of water on it, 
and I put my pencil on the wet leaves and it starts to expand a little bit because it's watercolor and it just sort of filters out into the paper. And then I take those and I take some fun foam from Michael's. Sorry, I don't have another camera. Put them in thick fun foam. I've used thick stuff and you can buy this like they make frames or um, little hats, visor hats. These are great and they're cheap. And so I take one of my, one of my little petals and I stick it, I take my, um, I take my stylus and I jam it down as far as I can into the fun foam. I jam it like really down as far as I can get it. And then I leave them to dry. I might have 40 or so in one of those and I just leave it to dry. And I don't take them out till we dry because hollyhocks have crinkled leaves and they have veined leaves. And when you take them out, and this might be hard to see, um, let's see if I can get a piece of paper behind it so you can see a little bit better. Do you put a hole in that fun foam first before you push? No, nope, I just jam it right down. Okay. And they come out veined and they come out wrinkled, which is what a hollyhock leaf looks like. Uh, oh, I don't know if you can see it. See, it's deep. And it's sort of a bit of a trumpet shape, but it's wrinkled because hollyhock leaves look wrinkled. <laughs> did that power punch come on that board or did you mount it on there? Yes, no, it comes on the board. I think it was I think it was 50 or 59 US. But it's it's worth it. And it's They're solid, out of, solid, lovely plexiglass. It's lovely. They're out of stock right now. <laughs> you probably could look for them on um, the Punch Bunch as well. It was the same price. Mm. It was the same price. But that's basically how I do that. And then I end up with, and I use different colors in them, and I end up with all sorts of different colors of wrinkled leaves. And I figured out what, what I want to make, and I go from there. And the instructions on how to do uh, this, except for the watercolor, are on Suzanne's instructions on in, um, in files. And they tell you how to use them with heart leaves, making leaves from heart leaves and just going up from there, how to make a hollyhock. So they're super simple to make, but I like, I like this veining in the middle because all of our hollyhocks, I don't know, it might be different in the South. All of our hollyhocks are veining and they're all wrinkled leaves and that's what I wanted them to look like. Right. Do you use it, the envelope doubled when you punch it? Oh, no. No. Oh, I go single. right on. Well, you could if you had your yeah, If you had. If you had, if I just I just go. You can see the edge of it, <laughs> where I've gone along to make the uh, things. Oh, I yeah. Could, could right you show the, the top of that punch to see the what the shape is? This oh, this one is um, it's just a round. I use I use round circles only for my hollyhocks. Oh wow! But in different sizes. So they, you can see I have, I have different sizes in there. So yeah. I have quarter inch, three eighths and eighth inch because you want them smaller as you get to the top. Mm -hmm. And I use two size leaves ones. I use, I don't know, I don't know even color it, what size it is, but a bigger, a bigger heart leaf and then a smaller heart leaf for the top. And then I take some of these for the rolled flowers that haven't come out. I roll them a little bit so they look rolled at the very top. Um, trying to figure out where the best ones to show you are. See how they get tinier at the top, the leaves mm -hmm. and the flowers. And I usually do about five to six, five rows, and then take the little rolled ones up the top with the tiny, tiny leaves. And and in the in, in the instructions that are on the on the groups I O, she actually shows you how to place them and how many to put on each one. So there's a beautiful diagram of stacking the leaves and the flowers right to the top. It's all there, it's lovely. And that's all I've done, I've copied. <laughs> I've copied with the exception of putting the veining in because I think I think uh, hollyhocks have to have two colors. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Yeah. Any questions on that? No. No. 
Get one of these, they're invaluable. They'll serve your hands. <laughs> That's really great, Pat. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. Thank you. Wait, wait, I'm gonna write that down. I didn't write that down. What do you call that thing? This is a magnum, magnum power punch. Magnum power punch. Okay. And it's from the punch bunch. So if you go to the punch bunch website, you probably find it there too. Or I know they had it on Dragonfly, but she's probably out right now. Okay. Thanks. And they were the same price exactly on either website. It's out of stock on Punch Bunch also. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I hope they haven't stopped making them. <laughs> well, it's if you can join it. their waiting list. Oh, yeah. yeah. Things to be delivered. Yeah. yeah. And, and the nice thing is you get a little piece of plastic to put on it. So you're not destroying the plexiglass. You get this to punch on so the, the sharp edges aren't destroying the plexiglass. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, are those, those little punches, those are the less expensive punches right these ones um i know karen Here's benson sign, sends a, uh, sells a lot of them we have a lot of them and you have any that. idea if using that little machine thing helps the the life of the punch right i save really don't fingers. know it's going to be but it's going to save your thumb right well, yeah, for sure <laughs> save the life of your thumb yeah yeah, I would imagine it would because it's you're you're hitting Consistent. evenly consistently yeah. at the time, right? Because right? you've got a fairly big, it's a fairly big piece that it comes yeah. down on. Yeah. So you're going to hit it com consistently as long as you put it. See, there's a little dot that you put it in. So so it will it will come down consistently on that place. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you can use any single punch like this. Uh -huh. yeah, even the bigger ones with this, it says. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. No questions for either Pat or Shirley? Uh, Shirley, I put one in a, the chat box. Where did you get the styluses that you use with the different tip on the other end i went on amazon and looked for dot painting tools oh okay yeah it this had a whole bunch of other stuff with it um it had these five light blue ones four dark blue ones uh some other stuff for dot painting and this whole kit was like 16 dollars and i've seen some with you know just like the light blue ones for like six dollars can you show it again? I wasn't here for the beginning. Oh, sure. You got the, the different rubber tips on one end. On this end, you've got the, the smaller styluses. And then there's four of these darker blue ones. And the largest one, I think the it's almost an inch uh, in diameter. That's just remember this is being recorded. So Marsha will be posting a, a link to this recording um, on the MCC group. So you can go back and watch some of these instructions because I know, but I'll know. Do check your styluses to be sure they're smooth. Uh, sometimes they come in a kind of rough, but I find if I, I can't remember if I'm muted or not. Oh, no, no. Okay. Um, on that and, um, and show it to you after Barbara present. Let me share. Okay, I can switch to, um, let's see. So I have that, and the way I can this is just, this is foam. Uh, and then I had green stuff that, um, uh, okay. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll gladly post this, but I wanted to get to the um, um, flower part. Um, mushrooms could be considered flowers. And Pat was talking about having different um, circles of sizes. I found one that had this um, kind of this loop and that's, it's. I think it's kind of like supposed to be like a sunflower, I mean a snow kind of drizzling kind of thing. It's um, it's a make it uh, memories something um, 
punch. And I don't know if it's still available or not, but it was a two-sided punch. Um, and so that's, you know, something to kind of look for is when you think about using punches, they don't have to be one up. So like earlier, Shirley was showing you a snowflake and she used the whole snowflake. Well, you can cut that individual um, section and, and the same thing is true of um, multi-piece um, punch that maybe has, you know, bigger things on it that has different size. Um, you know, so I always look at different punches for um, considering different shapes. Um, these little things are punches from, um, they were done for brochures. And so I had a lot from work. They were, you know, clearly like punching thousands of um, pages. Um, I was like, hey, yeah, I'll take them. And um, so I used them. And um, so depending on what size I had needed, I might have used those. Um, but they just, you know, paint up really easily. Um, I wouldn't be punching with them but just so I can have different sizes. And then the little stem is a toothpick. So the tip of the toothpick, um, there's the stylus that I use to shape as we've talked about already. And there's two different size mushrooms. The little ones and the bigger ones. And of course the paint is just red paint and then dots of um, uh, white. So uh, Morning Glory, this is the next one that I made and I used two different things. This is strips of paper. So painted paper that I just took some really good sharp scissors and just cut the little various, you know, edge off and it will naturally curl as you cut. Um, and then, but you can kind of curl it as well. Uh, so I used two different kinds kind of um, um, and I glued them together. Um, and then the leaves were just some punches that I had bought uh, from, I think, Hanky Panky. It was a combination group. It was a group swap. It was, um, one lady went in and, and bought all of them for everybody, and then she sorted them out. Um, so we got a, um, you know, because we didn't need, you know, a whole pack of leaves. But we, so I got a lot and lots of different colors instead of having to spend as much as one way that I would save some money. Um, so here are the actual flowers, um, same kind of punch, but I cut the punch and so just, um, not, not a slice, like, you know, think of a pie and you cut a slice out, but just cut to the center, that first cut, and then, um, to make a roll using, um, the needle point, um, thing, um, here, uh, needle tool. I rolled them on that and then glued the so where it overlapped. And then of course the leaves um, are glued onto that same uh, strips of um, paper. And then so here's that holly, I mean our morning glory all together. I'm kind of I'm copying that um, Mary Inglebright um, picture. You can see Oh yeah. Okay, so then there was some other. This is kind of, you know, if you want to get into fantasy, this is Mary Inglebright's egg-shaped flowers. Um, those are either um, circles or ovals. O ovals are probably just cut some off of a, a circle. Um, I know how the oval punch. Um, I have a lot of other ones, but I have the oval one. And then the leaves, same kind of idea with the leaves. Um, this is my daffodil. Um, so I made, to start with, I made a cone. And then the, the leaves, you can see I just literally cut them out kind of random shape, not, I mean, you know, similar shape, but random. You know, I'm not trying to make them exactly the same. And I'm trying to duplicate this uh, picture here. And so that's why I'm doing flowers that may be kind of different. Okay, um, and so here you can see, I just um, uh, glued it to my mat, you know, layered the, the, the bigger petals and then the tube glued it to the top. 
Um, I don't have it painted. I painted that afterwards, as you can see here. And um, I'm just sticking this into some of that, just some of that builder's home. Um, I saved my scraps. Um, I probably saved too many scraps, but <laughs> easily thrown away if you get paint on them or, you know, or clothes on them and don't want them that way. So there's the finished. The outer leaves, these bigger leaves are just um, the right shape, but they're uh, folded in half. And then the stem is uh, painted wire, uh, the cloth covered wire. This is a slightly different uh, flower, star lily, well, star flower. Um, so the way that I made those is very similar to the daff daffodils, just different shapes were cut. Um, dandelions. <laughs> um, I decided that you know they could just be the yellow stuff and um, the green. I didn't make actual dandelions for a tree. Um, um, I don't have a picture for that. We'll come back to it. Um, this is for the owl. Okay, so for the tree, this is actual branches. Um, it may have been actually for. Um, it, it wouldn't be, it would be like a flower stem, not, it, it may have been a flower stem, or, I, I don't remember, but um, this, this green is that foam. Um, and then this is how I made the doll. Um, again, I don't like putting this out here. So here is the finish project. And That's cute. Picture. Um, and I, I'll be glad to show this in person if, if um, um, y'all come back to me. I'll go get it, find it in the cabinet. <laughs> um, now, is this on your website, Rebel? Yes, it is on the website. Um, I do have um, all of this um, verbiage out there. I could just share that. That part be better because this reference is my old, um, old uh, website. And I think that's what I did. I saved it from there and uh, um, we'll transfer it over. Uh, okay. Um, and then um, I'll stop sharing here. Hold on. In my background, um, this on my over this shoulder, the yellow, the forsythia is um, painted wire, just the regular wire. Um, well, I guess it is cloth cover wire, but it's very, it's, it's better. Um, it didn't come unraveled, I guess. Um, and that is foam, the shredded foam that was yellow. It was already painted yellow when I bought it. Um, and then the tulips that are over here on the other side, that's a tulip shape that's shaped around, they were used shaped using the, um, the ball stylus. Um, and then just three of them glued together. They're, they are in a tulip shape and then three together to make seemingly um, more leaves. Um, and then just wire and some of the um, more paper that was painted. There you go. You can stop pop, pop like me, and I'll go find that. Super. Okay, Barbara has a weekly flower making group. <laughs> so she has plenty of practice. <laughs> well, yes, I don't have a tutorial though, like some of you have had, but I am willing to uh, write up a couple of free tutorials or free tutorials for you and put them on the group. Um, I'm just gonna show you a few flower arrangements. Our group, I have a club that we started in the mid nineties uh, called the Petal Pushers, P-E-T-A-L Pushers. Um, and we only do flowers and plants and landscaping kinds of things. And 
it originally started when I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area, but most of us moved away. And um, so the group kind of disbanded. But then when I moved to where I am now, and there was a lot of clubs here, we started it up again. I just took back the uh, same, um, what do you call it, charter from name and we are an official name group and we meet once a month and we do plants or flowers. Lately, we've been doing more quarter scale, but we can do all scales. Um, since most of us only work in quarter scale though, we make these plant arrangements and then we just don't know what to do with them. <laughs> so I'm going to see if this works for me to share my screen and turn on this uh, camera. Let's see. Oh, my camera's not on. Okay, so I've got to turn it on. Does it come on? So I've kind of forgotten how to use my camera because I haven't done it in such a long time. So bear with me a minute. Uh, Barbara S., you have some flowers to show also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, is my screen shared yet? Is it screen no. shared yet? No. no. Okay. Oh, here it is. Okay. Now you can see. All right. I was lucky enough <laughs> to find this cabinet. I wish I knew how to buy more of them because I love this cabinet. Isn't this pretty? And uh, I put all kinds of flowers arrangements. I have lots more, but anyway, some of the special things I have. And I wanted to show you at, we have uh, in our flower club, Christmas tree flowers. And we declare what scale it's gonna be in that year. And we usually have a theme. Anyway, I think this must've been a, I don't know what theme, but we did these poppies. And I got these three poppies from one person. I, maybe I made them, I can't remember. And basically the centers, uh, I need a white, a white background here, wait a minute. Sorry, I know it's waving around and that's annoying. There. Um, so the poppies are made with circles, again, cut out of tissue paper, orange tissue paper. And then we curl them and place the petals around the center, which is a wire that has been painted black, dipped in glue, and then dipped into some black uh, flower soft or foam kind of, you know, foamy stuff. It could be a uh, train foam. It could be uh, flower soft. It could be any kind of thing. So it makes a big center. And then we arrange, we just arrange them petal by petal around the center. And we made these cute poppies. And I made this, what we also do at our flower club is we bring, somebody brings a lot of extra plant materials, usually fake stuff. And we also play that game, you know, where you have a gift and, and uh, people can take it and stuff. So we had uh, vases, we bring a vase and then we play the game for which vase we're gonna go. So at our Christmas party or holiday party, we make arrangements with the flowers we got. So this is one I made with orange poppies that we, I got. And it's just made with like a podium and some kind of beigey dead flowery stuff, dead flower stuff, you know, dried flower stuff. And it made kind of a cute little arrangement uh, in there. Um, another one I made from one of our club parties was, I think not, not that one, wait, this one. Oh, one of the people took um, this 
I don't remember what it is, but you, you see, I think it's a bead or a plastic, plastic thing of some kind. And she put it on a finding, glued it to the bottom, which is a finding. And then I made an arrangement in it with these or, uh, red tulips and some green we, we had and little white flowers. Uh, and that was from one of our parties. I, I often don't make something with everything we got at one party because we don't always fit in one thing. Um, oh, here's one I made from one of them. This was a, a container that I got and we got uh, some tulips and these daffodils and made that one. Um, Arranging flowers in containers is tricky. I've never had a flower arranging class, so it's always tricky. This is just geraniums in a rusted, little circles, putting a bead, gluing a bead to the end of a wire and mixing them. Um, I think I was getting these as a gift, but I have made hydrangeas. And they are also um, something, this one's made, I think from a kit because it's on, it's, oh, the lighting is messing up the color. I'm trying to move it around. I know I'm moving it, but anyway, it's a uh, variegated white and blue and it's built on some kind of a structure, but uh, hydrangeas are easy. Curl your little tiny petals really tiny and put them on there. You could use round petals, but these are actually little petals that have, I don't know if they're five or four, they have five little little petals on them. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, I am trying to hold it straight. This is hard to hold it still. Marsha, I'm listening to your etiquette and it says hold it still, but that's really hard when I'm trying to find stuff. Um, <laughs> I did a class uh, years ago, a round table on making- Barbara? Quarters. Yeah. Um, you, you showed that when it was variegated. How did you variegate? Oh, I, I would uh, paint them all white and then uh, put some blue over them. I actually, uh, anymore, ba back when those were made, it was paint probably, but mm -hmm. anymore I use alcohol inks. But okay. I would make some petals blue and some white and then with the uh, alcohol inks you can um, use the uh, color blender to take some of the color out if you want a light you know one petal that's part white part blue you can use it with the color blender that's why those alcohol inks are amazing what you can do with them now with flowers and things so uh, but this has some white petals some blue petals and some of the petals are both white and blue. Um, if, if I were using paint, I'd probably paint the petals all blue and then dab some white here and there. Uh, this was um, a class I took making these. I'm not sure what these are now when I think about it. Are they, um, oh, I think of them in the South. Um, I don't know, but they're really cute. Are they um, gardenias? No, not gardenias. Um, I can't think of what I would call them. Uh, I think it starts with an M. Everybody think of it in the South, in big no. magnolias? Would they be magnolias? No. 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 Not okay, magnolias. I don't remember what, I don't know what these were as, but they, you know, sometimes we create our own. We have one member of our, our club that named Patty Hong and she comes up with things and she calls them Hongan berries. <laughs> this was one of our Christmas exchanges where we had uh, red and white uh, colors and some people made uh, poinsettias from kits and some made them from just petals and others made other flowers that are unrecognizable as something. I think that there's a couple of calla lilies in here. And then just greens that we, a lot of these greens are plastic or artificial flowers. And we arrange them. Um, 
this one, I think I got this as a gift or maybe, it, no, maybe we had a club meeting. It wasn't the flower club, but anyway, we had things out there to make something with. Them. And uh, I had this container and I just put, look, just some uh, holly leaves and berries and some um, little pine cones. Don't ask me where you get the pine cones now, but there are a variety of places that sell little miniature uh, pine cones. Uh, Kathy Abdenor has uh, 3D printed ones on her website that you can paint yourself, but these are, I think these are actually off of a tree that I can't remember the name of. Does anybody uh, They look like alder, alder cones that- I, yeah. I thought it was hemlock. In the, could, in the fall, I, you can pick them up in all the parks. Right. Or cedar? Right size. No, cedar so look like a rose. Oh, right. These are all one inch that I'm showing you. I don't have my quarter inch here. I figure we've seen a lot of quarter inch today, but um, anyway, I'm just showing you, these are all made one leaf at a time glued on. So they're not punched with a hole with them slid up the wire, which I find hard to do because I learned originally on um, doing one one at a time. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you some of these. Um, this is a pretty cute little one and it is just, let me pull it out. Getting out of here. I've got them wet. I've got them glued in with blue tack and they're so, but this is kind of a cute little arrangement uh, that is just star flower. I mean, they're just made out of stars, punch stars. Let me see if I can get it far enough away that you can see what it is. It's here. Oh, that didn't sound good. Hold on. Can you actually see the flower? Yeah, it's a couple of stars that have been curled and alternated and put on a stem and then a little yellow center. The yellow center, you just dip the end of your wire into yellow paint. And then these, you do slide the star up the stem. And then actually these leaves are cut from uh, plat they're plastic, they're artificial plant leaves and cut really thin and stuck in there and then a branch and it's a very kind of artful looking arrangement. I didn't make it, somebody gave it to me. It's kind of cool. Anyway, those are my sharings. It's not a lot, but I will put the instructions up if I can, I hope I can find them. I looked before the meeting, of course, not far enough ahead because I didn't have time to look thoroughly. And um, hold on, I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, I'm out of sharing, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, um, but I have, uh, the instructions how to make a quarter scale agapantha plant, which is relatively easy. It's only the leaves that are a little tricky, but if anybody's taking, uh, anybody who's taking Shirley's class on Saturday will learn that technique how to do the sleeves. It's just wrapping this uh, green stuff around a little pin or something, making it very tight. And then, and first you cut little slits for the leaves and then you wrap it around and around and then curl them back and poke your plants into the center. So I'll, I'll try to, I'll find that and post those directions so you can make a quarter scale agapantha plants. They're very nice to put outside. Um, not so great in an arrangement like this, but they're good landscaping plants. I don't know how many of you have agapanthas where you live, but they're a big deal out here in the West. Uh, they're fairly drought resistant and they have these beautiful, huge uh, purple. Oh, yeah. Barbara? Yeah, I, I went to eBay and looked at the house. I was like, there was one before that one. I shared them with the school. I was able to share. Yeah, these are like much. Okay. 
Oh, nice. Is that me now? No. It's all just paper. Okay. This year, they have to assemble the paper together. This is a workshop I did, and it's roses. They're not really showing up that well, but. And then these were made with uh, painted tissue paper. Uh huh. Nice. I did the phone bottles. Oh, that's good. Okay, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to use a paper. And some other ones I just made. I have some of them. Layers and layers and layers of sticky paper. Oh, wow. Let's see. I think both of these are instruments that I'm about to show. I did actually a swap for one convention or something or other. really hard to focus on them. I know it is, isn't it? This was a tropical one. I think we were on the boat or something for this. Mm. There's mm. little Anthurium and there's actually a bird of paradise in there as well. Uh-huh. Uh, sunflowers and how I made my own versions of those. All right. I finally got around to it. Thank you. Okay, anyone else I need to show? It's all in that file that I'm starting. I'm not going to mark it. It's a really good I just put the bay in the refrigerator, it out, and then I'll oh, so just a regular paper punch for that. Yes. Oh. Punch them out of way. Yes. 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 We can't do. Um, we can't. I don't know why. Oh, punch, oh my! No spotlight. Take me. Wait a minute, Jackie. Oops. Oh, no, I don't like camps. I don't particularly eat. Okay, okay. So what else would I have? Tip I have for punching on tissue paper. Want something really thin, like we did with the poppies. You put some layers of tissue paper inside and you put a bunch of tissue paper. Need the paper. I'm not going to use my own. I'm not going to use my own. I'm not surprised. That's a new thing for me to learn. Evelyn and Barbara died. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I just bought it. I have never used it. I just to feed my cats. Aww. It's almost nine o'clock now. So I know. I'm going to feed you. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess we can stop the recording now. Yeah, I think so. And